We're here with Imore King, and then and then what, what are you talking about at Tesla Tech tomorrow? How to uh, MPA, MPA is how the zero point energy can become an energy source. So it's, it's more of a theoretical talk, but it's basically uh, uh, self organization in the chaotic zero point energy, self organizing effects. The starting point of which is pair production. Right? They don't teach pair productions in Maxwell's equations, right? But you, know, you can count an electrical engineer. Maxwell's equation is the bottom line of electrodynamics. Nah, it's nonsense. Because right. Maxwell is fighting with Tesla. Maxwell won because he was the president of the Physics Society in Europe. So he dropped off the scale component. Oh, yeah. So he used to about Bearden. <laughs> that's, a, that's a Bearden thing, right? Bearden that, talks about that. that Maxwell's... Re well, re that Constantine talked about it. I learned from Constantine back in 2009 when he was speaking at Copenhagen. You know, scale waves and stuff. Like well, Maury, can you tell me a little bit more about yeah, what you're presenting? Right, so, Constantine's great. The, yeah. the, 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 the bottom line to get to build a case for tapping zero point energy, you have to know that the, it's chaotic in its existence, and the possibility of self organization can occur in it. And then the trick is how do I stimulate the self organization? Absolutely. Right? And then a lot of it is pulse plasma, is the main theme is you know, the, uh, jerking the ions in, in it uh, triggers. Vortex ring formations in the plasma called plasmoids, akin shoulder stuff. I kind of, I'm going to overview everything. And then once you accept that, you say, oh, then, then vortices, big vortices of plasma can, can basically entrain the zero point and give you more energy out. Um, most people won't try to even look for it because, after all, you have to put a ton of energy in right. to make the plasma in the first place. So nobody's looking. Uh, I, I picked these water electrolyzer projects because they were so simple. I think it's the simplest embodiment of a zero point energy effect for a practical energy device. And the main theme of the talk is it's not hydrogen that's coming from that, it's not the primary energy. It's a charged water gas cluster that, that activates, coheres, and traps zero point energy in the cluster. And it, when it collapses back to water, it yields a tremendous amount of coherent energy that's giving them the big energetic effects on these bronze gas electrolytes. When the bubble collapses near a surface, what he, what he has is a hole in the surface. And with the laser pulse, he makes the bubble collapses, the reentrant jet forms, and under the extreme pressures in the reentrant jet, we're now at the nanometer scale. Uh, we're above 300,000 psi, right? All compressed into this small area. The water forms into um, a solid state form, a macro, macro ionic water crystal. Okay. The tip of this crystal has a plasma bow shock wave that looks like where the zero point energy is coherence is occurring. That when he can shoot that thing through a hole, and that's how he, that's how he aims it and controls it, he uses a control surface, he forms it over a hole, then his application is he can use it for nano engineering, nano cutting, as a cutting tool. That's, his, that's how his practical use of his patent. All the stuff's in the power plant. Now this, this came out of cavitation in, in propellers originally? From the originally? Cav single cavitation bubble was this extraordinary concentration of energy. This bow shock wave, I immediately realized, holy cow, it has the same Can phenomenon I? as shoulders, EVs. Have you heard of Ken's shoulders? No. And, the, and the microscopic plasmoids that he launches that have extraordinary energy density? I've seen plasmoids. The little red little dot that actually circles around. You touch it, it burns your hands. Yeah, well, the, these uh, yeah, the plasmoids can be in the bigger plasmoid. They're vortex rings of plasma. Okay. But they seem to be involved with zero point energy coherence. Because, especially coming from shoulders, he makes the micron size one with very little energy can just I, from can, a capacitor. Can I get a point of clarification when you talk about bow shop plant? How fast is it going? There's a, there's, what's incredible, there's a self acceleration phenomenon. It starts around 1500 uh, meters per second, goes up to Mach 4. It self accelerates. Does it make a couple of shock boom? <laughs> Does that, does uh, I don't know. Features? It's more like it's it's more like um, propulsion, uh, flying saucer propulsion type phenomena. Something that Ken Shoulders also observed in his plasmoids. Uh, they would take off on their own as from propulsion. Would, would, would that create any kind of acoustic? I don't know. It's shock? it's uh, it may not because it seems to be it's 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 it's. it's it seems like it's disconnecting from. Them. So this is this is kind of a would you would you describe this as kind of a low energy nuclear reaction then? Some kind no, of it's not nuclear. Oh, it's good. It's about to become nuclear. What I'm telling you, because when this when when either an EV or uh, the bow shockwave of this uh, water crystal 
strikes a target, especially after it accelerates, it creates transmutation events. In fact, it creates nucleosynthesis, which means I get, I get elements appearing that are all across the periodic table. This appears utterly impossible to our Western science. And the reason I say Western science is because the Russians and the Ukrainians have a similar experiment with large plasmas, and they take a pure target of lead, copper, or whatever it is, they hit it with a centimeter sized plasmoid and they get super nuclear synthesis events and they smash that target. Yeah, I, transmutation, I, I, proton 21 laboratory, all these references are in this PowerPoint. Okay, great. Um, and they, and th that work is the best transmutation work on the planet, completely ignored in the West. Yet the Russians every year have a conference called Ball Lightning and Transmutation. Wow. To study this phenomenon, they paid our professors to come up with theories to explain it. The universities do the experiments with these plasmoid strikes, and that work won't even be looked at by Western academia. Now, there's that's what I hate. I hate the 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 total so now, ignorance of everything. This can be done with water cavitation. This is Mark Leclerc's discovery. Water cavitation to produce these reentering jets when they strike the target. And what he does is he rolls up a veneer of aluminum veneer with holes drilled in it, puts it in a, a yeah. little PCB pipe, and he has a cavitating pump that really starts the pump, it squeals and makes a lot of noise. And he runs it for a half an hour or an hour. So that he, he gets uh, elements all over the periodic table, unusual isotopes that are not readily found in nature, and they tend to have multiples of the helium nucleus. As he looked up, which is a symptom of like nuclear synthesis, which typically or, or our science are done by supernovas to generate. Here we're doing it with water cavitation. Are, are they able to capture some Mark of these elements? Well, or are well they no, they're permanently on the plate. All Mark Leclerc needs, and this is what the Peswicki said, was we need replication of that. That's the basic experiment. That was my action item number two. Was no. Physics departments. Replicate that experiment and see if you don't measure the same nucleosynthesis events. It would blow your mind. Now, you also mentioned when he was playing around with the, uh, I guess at the lecture, I, I, I did attend a little bit of it, that he was tweaking the, the valve to create the cavitation. Yes. They emitted certain frequencies or radiation. Right. One of, the, one of the things he warns about, he gave himself rate, uh, symptoms like radiation sickness uh -huh. because he was too close to the apparatus as he was working. The, now, where do you think is causing that to happen? Well, the transmutation events in, in the chamber. It is radiation, like x-rays and gamma and all these. Well, we don't know because nothing or, was really or, measured. Or you think it's perhaps the acoustic frequency coming out and inferring as biological. It could be. He thinks. He thinks. He thinks because he's, he's measured. By the way, he did, did. He sent it out to be analyzed. What is the? Yeah. Is the but I thought the same thing. You know, I'm thinking I'm, about I'm, Oracle and all that. I'm thinking about can, like. I'm thinking about electro smog. Yeah. <laughs> you got close well, up. well, it's a possibility. But the point was, it's it's important to, to uh, be warned, and it's okay to to. Uh, he says, just shield it. And if you want to work the valve, don't do it by hand, work it remotely. He, what, he, what he had to do on the valve, it would, it would make, he was starving the pump. The pump was a 25 gallon per minute pump uh, for a swimming pool filter. He starved it down to a half, half a gallon. And that pump would squeal and make a lot of noise. And we just kept it to maximize that volume and that squealing. Around five to seven kilohertz frequency of the noise, right? And he, he knew that that's what, that starving that pump like that would, would cause tons of cavitation. And that's why that's why I kept adjusting. Now, what do you think about the water hammers? Because I know I know people doing water hammer having yeah. the same transmutation effects. Yes, yes, because it creates produces a I ton of cavitation. Yeah. And I put a slide up on that of Keeley. Keeley's device, his first um, free energy device, was based on water hammer. Ten years was back in 1870s. Ten years before water hammer was recognized by science, he came up with with a water hammer yeah. cavitation device. Because it, I think it's easier to just replicate with water hammer. Yeah. Like, all you there need you is, a, is an electric uh, motor, and is, you know, get the right uh, throw enough holes in there and the right spacings. And there you go. That, that's a good experiment. Is there some 
uh, model of how to do that water hammer if it's yeah. if it's easy. I'd be happy to you know. I well, like you could just just stuff. you can read about water hammer. That's I think there's standard. some videos on YouTube on water hammer. Water hammer. Okay. Yeah, it's really cool. It basically, I, I basically understand the, the 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 bigger it's, concept. It's drawing, yeah. it's drawing yeah. lots of. Uh, Vacuum, which yeah, makes yeah, it yeah. The faster you go, the bigger the vacuum, and the more, I guess, and more the hammer. Yeah, the the, the, the sound. I, I understand the concept of water hammer, but I, I but how to do it and I how think to that's do it to make sure those tubes in that <laughs> nuclear reactor that they have to shut down now, the one in California, because the, the, the corrosion of all the tubes are, are occurring way too soon. It's because of the vibration. In the oh yeah! Environment, it's, right? it's not getting it's out. It's creating cavitation, yeah. which is just killing, out. killing the, the, uh, the pipes. So they lost their nuclear reactor. Now they're going to have to retrofit every pipe just because too much vibrations.